Okay, let's talk about uh, weekly at the money or WATMs. And there's a couple of misconceptions people have about this trade. I'm gonna explain like what you're actually doing to make money on this trade, but also common pitfalls that people fall into in terms of their criteria selection and when to enter and exit and things like that. So this is an example of a perfect weekly at the money. This is NSC and I was able to short this for six weeks in a row and make like 200% on the initial debit on it. That wasn't the total risk. The total risk, I think I made maybe like 80% on the total risk or something, but it was a perfect WATM. So here's what you need. You need a bullish catalyst that sticks. The bullish catalyst is important because it has a clear delineation between the previous price action and the current price action. If you don't have that bullish catalyst, you don't have this line in the sand that's like a story changing line on the stock. Typically, the catalyst is from earnings, but it can be anything else. It could be like a CPI report or some sort of shift in the market or some sort of news, maybe takeover rumor, something like that. Uh, but you need the bullish catalyst because you need a very sharp line here for when you're out of the trade. If this catalyst breaks, then you're out of the trade and you can ride the long put. So the bullish catalyst is super important. You can't just have compression. Secondly, you need to have the stock in compression because if it's too bullish, it's gonna pull away from your long put and you're not gonna be able to eat enough short puts quickly enough to make up for the loss in the value of your long put. So you want it in compression, but slightly bullish or neutral. Now, the next thing you want is you wanna make sure you're getting enough premium for your short puts. If you don't get at least 1%, so on NSC, it was like around 250 bucks. If you're not getting at least 250, for your short puts that are like a week out, you can't do this strategy. And you want it to be about a week out. You don't take a two week one that gives you 1% or whatever, that's too long. So you wanna have it about a week out and you wanna get 250 on it. Um, ideally more, you should probably get more like $3 for a short put, the more the better. But obviously that means the stock is more volatile. The biggest mistake is when you have a perfect setup but you're not getting enough premium, so you try to milk it a bit. You buy something that's maybe like a little bit in the money or something so that you get enough on your short put. You're not shorting delta on this. You're not trying to win directional. You're trying to just sell premium. So it doesn't matter if the stock goes up or down. Now, the third thing is that I found that you don't necessarily have to eat the first week of short put. So if you don't immediately make a profit on it, but the structure of the trade is still intact, you're fine, that's good, no big deal. Just keep shorting the same strike. So let's say on NSC, if you were entering here and you shorted like the 255, yeah, let's say you shorted the 255 here and then by the end of the week, it like died. Well, that's okay, no big deal. Just short the 255 again, even if you're below it. Just keep shorting the 255. And the reason for that is because you have structured the trade for a max loss and you have the risk structured for like a 250 long strike or maybe a 245, probably a 250 long strike and a 255 there. If you start shorting lower strikes, you mess with the risk of the trade. So. If the structure is still intact, continue to short the same strike that you started the spread with. If you start getting bullish and you're higher up and you wanna short the next one, then you can maybe, if you want to, short a 260, something like that. But here I would just short a 257.5, something like that. So you can short higher strikes, if it makes sense, but don't short lower strikes. Ideally, if you're starting to short lower strikes, you're probably in trouble and you're gonna have to cowboy your shit out of there. You don't want that to happen, okay? So next thing that you want is you wanna make sure you have a good long strike selection. On this one, it was really easy, it was 250. Because you're probably not gonna get a candle that closes too far below that. But the cool thing about NSC is you could have taken the April 26 one and this strike would have kept its value because you're taking it after next earnings, that means that the further away you pull from it, there's still gonna be some implied volatility baked into it from the upcoming earnings, so it's not gonna bleed off too quickly on you. You also wanna strike where if you have to get out underneath it, there's like a nice runway of room underneath it. So if I had to get out and it closed below this level, I'm already a little bit in the money on the strike, which means it's gonna gain value quick. And then secondly, I have a nice runway down to here. I have like seven bucks of room to run, so that if I have to eat a failed short put, I can eat a failed short put and profit on the way out. That's why the bullish catalyst is so important. Because if you don't have the bullish catalyst, you probably don't have a little runway between where the story changed and then back to the original story. So the long put is important. Your long put shouldn't be any more than like, I don't know, like three times the cost 
of what your short puts are. Otherwise, you just gotta chew through too many short strikes before you eat your long put down to a zero cost basis. On NSC after the sixth week, my cost basis on the long put was negative $3. That's what you want. You wanna eat away that long put as quickly as you can so that you don't lose the money on it. All right, so that's the key on that. So everything you do in terms of the selection of the chart depends on you being able to get positive premium off of it. So when you're selecting your chart, the structure of the chart's important. I have a couple of examples here. Here's Okta, this is a good one, uh, but I wanna pick a couple that aren't good right now that I don't think are great. So let me pick uh, an old one here, NTAP, but not this one here. NTAP, let's go back to this catalyst here. This was previously. So NTAP was not a good pick for a couple of reasons. The first reason was it wasn't offering enough premium. So it was a little bit under 1% actually, and you wanted it more than 1%. But the second thing is it was in a slight bare channel. You wanna make sure that when you take this thing, like I took it here, I think, when you take it, you're not in a potential bear channel. There's a couple of other ones that are like that too. IBM was another one. It looks like a nice compression, but from the top of that bullish candle, you're in a bear channel. So you have to wait till that breaks out. Otherwise, you're not in a slightly bullish trend. You're in a, a bearish one, and it could just fall apart. You don't want to have to leg out of this thing. You want to take something that means you won't have to leg out of this thing. Now, obviously, it came back, but look how far low it dipped. Like, you would have tried to leg out of that thing. It was in a clear bear channel the whole time, and it didn't break out of it until like here or here, something like that. It maybe broke out of it, oh geez, I don't know, maybe here? But if you see, I have an earnings AVWAP on here too, and you can use that to tell whether this thing is bullish or bearish. Ideally, you want the earnings AVWAP for it to be kind of hovering through and around it, or to have broken above it and then bounced, and then you're taking it somewhere right in there. When you're looking for breakouts above the earnings AVWAP, something like this is not adequate enough. If I'm looking at that on the 15 minute chart, that's this. No, you wanna see a little bit of daylight. You wanna see something like up to there and then a bounce and then you're in it right away through there. So when I'm looking at something like, uh, let me see here, NTAP. I like NTAP again now. It probably has enough premium now. I know Dave took it. But if I see this earnings AVWAP, let me just delete these two lines. NTAP is still in the bear channel on the compression. And that bear channel could climax out down to the bottom. And I don't know if there's enough runway under certain, like the 15 EMA or maybe there, there might be enough runway to exit. But now where it's at, if I wanna take it, if you look at this earnings AV app, it's not really broken above it. I wanna see something like boom up to there, then boom back down to there, then bounce, then I'll take it right through there. I wanna see a nice extension through and then it bounce off at a support. Otherwise, we could lose this and come right back down. Now, I might still take it, but we'll see. I'm always using the earnings AVWAP on this thing. DKS is another example. This thing is slightly too bullish. And the reason is because there's this huge monster difference between these two strikes. There's like $20 difference or something like that between the strikes, which means that you gotta take the 210 strike, which is okay, but then the 210 strike plus the distance is your risk. And you might be looking at like $20 risk for like not a lot of upside. And because this is a little bit more bullish than you really want it to be, this 210 strike has to be pretty cheap. And it's not cheap on DKS, and that's why I'm ta not taking it. I'm gonna wait for maybe this to pull down and bounce a little bit and get a little bit lower to the 210, and then I can short something and it'll be a little bit less bullish. But if this thing keeps taking off, I might not be able to get enough profit before my 210 dies off. Um, on net, this thing is a whippy mess and I'm still stuck in it right now. I think I can fight my way out of it though. But as you can see, I thought that I was out of the bear channel, but I wasn't because it was using this candle and this is still in a bear channel right now. So what I'm doing right now is I'm shorting at the money strikes that are the same strike as my long put, which means that I'm kind of neutral. I don't really need to know which direction it's gonna go in. I can cut it or I can short an at the money strike when it breaks out through here, but I'm just gonna keep bleeding off. Because I have a strike on the long strike after 426, I'm fairly safe on it. I have a long runway, okay? Um, trip was another really good one. As you can see, it broke up, down, under a little bit, but then it broke back above, and you, you see there's no, there's no real bear channel. The, the bear channel has been broken right here on this candle right through here, so that's a good entry, and I think Dave took it right there, or maybe like there or there. 
Uh, and then, you know, he had to take profits there because it got a little too bullish. But that's a nice entry right through there. Okay. So now we're talking about uh, what I'm waiting for for entry. Dell looked like a good one right around through here. But as you can see, very strong bear channel. And the bear channel just kept going and going and going. Um, I'm looking at potentially entering OKTA. But the premium is a little wild for that long strike. And I want to see it maybe get up to here and bounce. And especially uh, because it's it's a little too bearish for the market right now. This thing could fall apart potentially. And also right at this strike, if you look on the weekly stroke all the way back here, the IPO AVWAP, which can be quite strong, is literally right there. So that might be a hard rejection as well. So I want a little more information on that. I like Oracle because it's a bull channel, but this is kind of high volume and aggressive as a rejection. So I need to see this thing hit a little bit more support uh, start to look a little bullish, a little recovery, start to stay maybe above the 8 EMA, back up maybe around like 128, 129 before I short um, a 129 and maybe like a 124, maybe a little bit higher up, something like that. Um, that That's kind of what I'm looking at for weekly at the monies. So to sum things up, you need to make sure you're entering at the right spot for an advantageous long strike to short strike ratio. You need to make sure you're balancing the bullishness and compressionness of the stock. You need to make sure that your long strike is a really advantageous position that gives you a clean runway to exit, so you know for sure. And the long strike is going to hold enough value not to die completely when this thing takes off or if it takes off too much. And lastly, you need to make sure you're not in a bear channel. Hence, you need it to be slightly bullish. And then you need to have a clear bullish catalyst as well while it absorbs. So that's my rant about weekly at the monies. Hopefully that kind of helps clear things up a little bit. And that's my, my thought process.